I'm using the line of a plane of occlusion on the natural tooth of 3-4, the two-thirds retromolar pad, or the occlusion rims if they were in place. I'm going to go back and adjust this a little bit, probably. But I'm very close to having a consistent overjet and a consistent overbite. As I look at it again here now, maybe my uh, eye tooth, 2-3, uh, can come down a little bit more. It seemed to be a little bit off the plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue and finish my anterior setup and then the lower uh, anteriors and then stop. I've taken out tooth number 1-1. One, one. You can see the red pencil I've used here to mark the gingival uh, margin. Now, if you look where I've drawn a pencil line here, this is almost like the height of contour of the ridge if I was to use a surveyor. Because in a lot of uh, uh, immediate dentures, there's a path of insertion. All these lines I've drawn here are undercut. Do you see them here that I'm drawing? These are all undercut and will have to be relieved after processing. There's no way this denture is going to go into the client's mouth. If I engage all this hard, bony undercut with acrylic. Or I don't want to run the risk that it's not going to go in the patient's mouth. So after processing, I'm going to get my burr, probably something we've never done, because like, well, we don't usually touch the integral surface of the denture. In this case, we're going to. Then we're going to use a visual surveyor. I guess you could use duplicate model. It's a little overkill. And we're going to ream out the undercuts of the denture. So then after surgery, this is going to go straight in. We can't run the risk that the patient is anesthetized there's no way the oral surgeon is going to take out a denture burr and start trimming your denture. It's gotten to the point so bad now in practice that many surgeons will send the patient back to the dental office or the denturist office and say, you insert the denture. Downside to that is while the patient's driving over, they're swelling up. The denture might not fit anyways, right? They don't want to be bothered or they're fed up with the denture not fitting. Also, because they inserted it, there may be some ownership to the denture. It's like, well, I didn't make it. I'm not putting it in. It was your job. Because if they put it in, the patient believes, okay, the surgeon put it in. Maybe they're uh, responsible for what's happening to me. I find these days, a lot of people are in a defensive mode, right? It's unfortunate, but with good consultation and due diligence, there's nothing wrong with this procedure. So, while I was talking, I was trimming the neck of the central. Now, I put it in place at the same facial contour, but the neck is hitting the model. If I go down here, you can see one central is longer than the other. Can you not see it's more extruded? So I need to go back and trim the neck a little bit more. Do not have the model interfere with the denture tooth. Sometimes when we're doing an immediate denture, the teeth look really abbreviated and almost like uh, acute necrative uh, ulcerative gingivitis where there's like a lot of bulky plastic over the teeth. Unfortunately, some of your dentures look like that when there was room. So don't do that <laughs> in your, when we have room in your wax up. No. Now that I put this one on here, I'm thinking I maybe shift this central over a little bit. Unfortunately, my was my midline. I'll have to go back and subsequently move the lateral in the canine as well. So, uh, gold standard for immediate dentures: remove the posterior teeth first of the client. Let them go three months without anything in the posterior section. So therefore, when an immediate denture is made, we know there's no bone atrophy here. It's already occurred. So now we have a positive seat for our, our bite registrations. We have a positive seat for the final prosthetic. Now, unfortunately, things don't work that way in the marketplace. It's like, yeah, for whatever reason, socioeconomic reason, prepping the patient for systemic health issues, a lot of people got to get off the thinners because they're going in for surgery because they're elderly. They got to get off the blood pressure. They got to get off the 
Metformin, stop the chemo. Take the thinners. Get off all the drugs. Especially when you want things to clot naturally and they're on thinners, which is kind of inhibiting the prothrombin in the blood to clot here. Yeah. I'm not there yet. There will be a post dab naturally. But now, while I'm setting up the teeth here, let's talk about the post dab. What's the reason of the post dab? Do you remember the philosophies we talked about in the last couple of weeks? Whose was altering the model with a post dab? Which one of those doctors was it? Dr. Uleg? And he also created suction cups in the denture too, I think. So we're adopting a lot of things from all the denture philosophies. Now keep in mind those denture philosophies were created before cross-linked monomers, before injection systems, when there was more shrinkage in the PMMA. So the post dam was actually put in to compensate for the shrinkage of the acrylic, also to ensure that we have a positive seat between the junction of the hard and soft palate. No, that's over here. 911. It's the room number I had in Montreal. 911. 911. 911. So, I still have the canine left. Basically, I'm, I'm doing orthodontics with my prosthetics and I'm putting their teeth in the, in the more uh, neutral zone of where they possibly should have been. So, extract the last one, three. I guess you could snap it off, but I run the risk if I snap it off that I lose some of my, uh, uh, the labial eminence here, the buccal eminence, canine eminence of the one three, that's what it is. Reduce here some of the tooth structure. After an immediate denture, how long should the client wear the denture for after insertion, surgery? 24 to 48 hours, it doesn't come out controls the swelling, protects the clotting zones. If they take it out too early, it'll disturb the clot, excessive bleeding, protect the extraction sites. It's not a pretty sight. And then roughly five to seven days after surgery, adjustments are made, especially around here where these sharp bony Eminences are here in the undercut, if we haven't relieved enough. And then a soft liner is applied to the denture. Soft liner, roughly three weeks. After three weeks, taken out, a new one. Chasing the atrophy of the ridge. Refitting the denture temporarily for three months. The soft tissue also provides uh, a cushion against the extraction sites. It's not as painful, it's plastic. Kind of rubber. Look at that, I'm hitting here. Wow. Now, the downside again to media dentures, with this one in particular, there's no try in. We could have tried in the posterior teeth only to assess the shade and the vertical dimension, but there's no try in. So there's no, there's no redo chance. There's no, oh, your midline's off. There's no, oh, the shade is off. There's, it's gotta go. Now that's why some treatment plans are, well, wear the temporary denture and we'll fix all those things later. But I think if we're doing a good job,
You go straight forward. On a personal note, if I pulled the last 50 full denture try-ins, 40, no reset, no change. I think that's our goal. If we go to the laboratory yesterday, six cases come back from the dental office, they all say process. That's the best thing to see. Sometimes I wonder though, if we should be. <laughs> Things must have gone okay. Now I'm looking at my setup here. The right side is not symmetrical with the left side. I'm gonna go here. Just because I set this side up doesn't mean I can't change it again. Even though my incisal line angle is in the same place, I need to have the same emergence angle. I've got one neck sticking out a little bit further than the other. And I may even go back there again and again and again until I'm satisfied. I think the denture setup is a constant back and forth. It's not like, oh, I've put it in wax, I'm done. You could go on endlessly here, could you not? You could set up this denture all day long and the next day, making slight changes and tweaks and rotations. But as long as I'm in the ballpark to start with, I can move forward. And I think that's where us at the novice or beginner or novice, we get locked up. And saying, well, is that okay? I'm not sure until we have a relationship with something else. It's in free space here. I need it in relation to the bottom. I need a relation to the plane of occlusion. I need a relation to the emergence angle of the other teeth. So every time I'm looking at it from a different angle, I'm constantly adjusting, changing. You could leave the room, come back, look at it and say, wow, it's way off. Because you're staring at it so long, it starts to look okay. But you need to kind of have a real refresh. Sometimes two dentures at the same time is better. Put one aside and then go back to the other one and it looks like, wow. We say, which student made this one? It wasn't me. Yeah, it was me, right? But I didn't recognize my own uh, faults. So it's about perception and increasing your perception, but you can't be in denial to say, oh, yeah. the tooth shape wasn't right. The wax got hard. The snow was falling heavy. The lights blinked. The power went out. Whatever. We have to overcome, persevere, and proceed. Now, last but not least, I was off the screen there, the bottom three. I've taken them out, but I have these other three teeth here that we're in relationship to these. I also have where the ridge is. It's borderline class two, but I think I can stretch a half a millimeter, three quarters of one to make the uh, class one, which was my goal here, I think. Later on today, I have some of my own clients. I'll show you pictures pre-operative and post-operative, just recently. Unfortunately, in the private practice, we don't have, uh, we're busy and then we don't take the camera out as much as we should. It's like, oh, that would be interesting to keep an eye on, but. I think I have a couple of uh, recent ones. They may be implants, but still there was a median, so it's the same thing. Now, with that other treatment plan, when we have the interim denture, you know the temporary one I was talking about? They would wear subsequently with the temporary relines and the final relines and throw it away, then make the new denture. Problem with that one is, sometimes they fall in love with that post-operative first denture that puts the pressure on the practitioner to recreate that again. If you could think of it in the Crown and Bridge laboratory where I know I started out, I would do all the temporaries. And the ceramist would come over and say, Paul, go easy on the uh, temporaries. 
They're looking a little. They're looking too nice. They don't look temporary enough. Sometimes the patient will say, "Yeah, it looks good. I'm not going back." And they're walking around till the temporary debonds it falls out, or the final prosthetics made, and they don't like it because the temporary looked better. Temporary might have looked better because it was all plastic. This is before the advent of all ceramic crowns, though, where we were doing all PFMs, PV. You know, they had to opaque the metal, so it was a lot tougher to end up with that shade. I think you have the advantage of using like white tooth acrylic to shape it. It didn't have this, the strength of the PFM, but I think it was just as good aesthetically in some cases. So here's my anterior six with the consistent over jet, the midlines on top of each other. At least they will be once I finish adjusting this bottom one a little bit here. And then what's my next step? I'm gonna move on and put all the posterior teeth on my flat plane. You can see the plane of occlusion different from where it was and where it's going to be. I'm going down here. <coughs> so, let's move on and finish the anterior six, the lower six. And in 40 minutes, we'll go and put on the posteriors.